Hello, I'm Bruce Feldman. So you're a capture manager or proposal development professional, and you're ready to bring generative AI into your workspace to help you write more proposals and win more business. You've done the reading, you've watched the YouTube videos, you've seen the demonstrations, you've talked to the platform vendors, you know what product you wanna bring on board. But now you have to win the approval of your corporate leadership to make that happen. And to do that, you need to make the chief financial officer of your company your champion for bringing in generative AI. There is no cookbook for winning the support of your chief financial officer because every CFO in every company is different. But what you can tell that person is that domain aware generative AI offers enormous potential for increasing win rate and reducing proposal costs. We've also seen a lot happen in the roughly year and a half since generative AI exploded into the public consciousness and domain aware generative AI became a tool for winning more proposals. We now understand a lot more about the principal costs for bringing Gen AI into your environment, your make buy lease decision, how you're gonna host your platform, how you're gonna manage your data so that it's protected and secure. But there are also a potential hidden costs that your chief financial officer is gonna to want to explore as well. Organizational change management. Can we save money by reducing the drain we place on program labor? that generates revenue by working for customers directly? And do we understand the volatility of how much costs will change now and in the future? Here's a chart that shows you the kinds of things that your chief financial officer is gonna to wanna to understand before they become your advocate and evangelist for bringing generative AI into your enterprise. That person is gonna understand what are the use cases. They're gonna deliver more wins and make proposal costs go down. What's your value proposition and your return on investment? What do you believe for your platform is gonna be the make, buy, or lease decision? How are you gonna host that platform in your environment? How are you gonna manage access to corporate data? How much will organizational change management cost? And how long will it take until your workforce achieves a good level of proficiency? How will you adapt your workflows and your processes to make best use of generative AI? And how do you need to customize your use of generative AI platform to follow your company's best practices? And then finally, what residual risks remain and how you mitigate those risks? The use cases for generative AI take advantage of its ability to write high quality proposal content at terrific speeds. It can combine external and internal data internal data from the training data set that was used to create the generative AI or be fine-tuned on, external data from the internet, from your corporate knowledge repository or from other external sources. You can generate narrative in a format that you specify with content, style, and tone that you direct. You can spark creativity by having generative AI respond to a scenario with ideas, potentially that you haven't considered. You can use generative AI to role play. It can be a writer, it can be a reviewer, it can be a tutor, it can be a teacher. Now there are key performance indicators you're gonna to wanna to track in order to assess the value of generative AI and in particular, make sure that it's delivering the promised return on investment. You're gonna to wanna to be able to track how much you're spending on labor costs for business development, capture and proposal. You wanna understand if you're seeing improvements in your win rate, especially now in the early days when the presence of generative AI is still a competitive differentiator you're gonna to wanna to analyze award debriefs to see how you're scoring on strengths and weaknesses. And in particular, your chief financial officer is gonna to wanna to understand the initial investment, the recurring sustainment costs, and how much volatility can you expect in the price of Gen AI going into the future. So generative AI clearly can improve the quality and reduce the cost of proposals, but only if you have a well-equipped user workforce. Your capture and proposal professionals need to understand the capability and limitations of generative AI. But even as I say this, we are living through a time when we are seeing generative AI become an assistant for virtually all knowledge workers. AI is not gonna replace us, at least in the current generation of tools, but an AI trained professional will. So what are some of the key drivers of the cost and potential for cost volatility when you bring Gen AI into your enterprise? Well, first of all, there's your decision on what platform to buy and are you going to make it yourself? Are you gonna buy a platform 
or again, a lease a platform. By lease, I mean usually software as a service arrangement. If you make it yourself, you are almost guaranteed to have a close focus on your organizational needs, absolutely. But on the other hand, there is a significant investment in creating models for generative AI. You can have a high investment, you might wind up diverting resources internally. There will certainly be a steep learning curve to create a business development domain aware generative AI platform for your own use. You can buy a platform, that way you're not expending your time and effort on development and cost of developing and creating a platform for your use. Okay? But there is still significant investment. You're still gonna have to insource some sustainment cost and outsource other sustainment costs. You have to pay to have that platform tailored to your local environment. And you're gonna remain dependent on a third party vendor, the company that provided you with a platform for ongoing upgrades and retraining. If you lease a platform using software as a service or a similar acquisition model, you'll have a much lower initial investment. You'll still have annual sustainment costs to pay, but in particular, the challenges you have to overcome in keeping that model up and running will be significantly reduced, although you will have to retain dependence on a third-party vendor. The generative AI user community has really settled on two different models for how you bring generative AI into your premises. One can be bring it into your IT infrastructure inside your company, inside your own data center. You have direct control of the hardware. You can maintain and control every aspect of the security environment. However, there is significant cost attached to bringing it into your own IT environment because not every model is going to be a nice clean fit necessarily into your IT environment. Alternatively, you can host a generative AI model in a virtual private cloud, your virtual private cloud, be it GovCloud or a commercial product. So you'll have other advantages. Now you don't need to go out and buy hardware. You have much more assurance of being able to scale the product as your user demand inside your enterprise increases. And you have the added advantage of the VPC security that's available to you. But there are still subscription fees and costs associated with initial setup and deployment. The industry has also settled on roughly two ways to enable you to bring your corporate proprietary data into the Gen AI environment securely. One is fine tuning the model, actually training the model itself, the foundation model at the core of your Gen AI on your data. Now you're gonna to have to go back and periodically update that training as your company's enterprise repository evolves. You have to clean that data, do recurring model training, bring in AI specialists to do that, and maintain a training infrastructure. Alternatively, you can do retrieval augmented generation where you create an enterprise data library. There's much less expense involved in preparing the data to go into an enterprise data library, and you can maintain your data currency. Now, what's the difference in performance? Fine tuning will give you faster, better performance. So one of the questions you wanna ask yourself is retrieval augmented generation good enough for your immediate needs on your domain aware platform? McKinsey estimates that the cost of organizational change management, the investments you need to make in your enterprise and your people could be significantly more than acquiring the model itself. You're going to have to write new policy to make sure that the people in your company use generative AI appropriately. And by that, I mean both protecting people from using public platforms, which might record your data, which you don't want to have happen, and also appropriately using whatever Gen AI platform you choose to bring into your enterprise. You're going to have to train your workforce on how to use it correctly. Gen AI has amazing capabilities. It also has significant limitations. You have to bring your workforce up to a level of proficiency so they use the tools effectively and efficiently and without creating risk. You're going to have to adapt your best practices. If your company's got a, for example, proposal development manual, you're going to have to assess how Gen AI is going to change your best practices and likewise, how you're going to use the Gen AI in order to implement your best practices when your people go in to use the platform. You're gonna to have to have some kind of immersion program for your workforce. You can't just bootstrap a Gen AI program with two or three or a handful of people. On the other hand, it's questionable whether or not you can train a thousand people at a time. So you're gonna to have to decide on your implementation approach for when you bring Gen AI to the workforce and make it available. How fast and to what extent are you gonna immerse your workforce in using Gen AI? And then finally, you're gonna to have to communicate effectively with your workforce. There are significant fear factors out there about people's jobs being eliminated or replaced 
People are going to have to acquire new skills and adapt. So workforce communications will be essential to keeping employee retention high and morale high. To make adjustments to your business process for proposal development, I recommend you consider implementing a capability maturity model. You can use that to look at your processes and assess whether or not they range from chaotic, large A ad hoc, to highly organized and highly efficient, or somewhere on the scale in between them. You want to understand that process maturity so you can ask yourself, where are the places where generative AI is going to give me the most value added as quickly as possible? Remembering that when you use Gen AI, the proposal development may go out the door, the expense is incurred immediately, but the reward is not going to be seen until the award is made by the customer. And if that's the case, you may have to wait three months, six months, a year, or longer in order to see the benefits of that return on investment. So you're gonna to wanna to identify those places where it's clear you are gaining efficiencies and improving quality inside your processes. In order to measure that, you're gonna to wanna to be able to collect our data, cost data, quality data. There are of course risks and mitigations that are gonna be required in order to adopt generative AI into your enterprise. Here are some to consider. One is, what steps might your customers, for example, the government take in order to reduce the potential for being inundated with mediocre Gen AI created bids? Your contract executive is going to need to be able to speak to people in the government and in the customer set about how Gen AI can be used appropriately to increase quality and at the same time reduce the cost, which is returned to the government sometimes in GNA and your indirect rates. If your investment in organizational change management is insufficient, you're going to encounter workforce problems. You will not see the gains in productivity, the improvements in win rate you were expecting. You may also see damage in terms of employee morale and loss of retention. Your chief HR officer needs to be involved in having an effective organizational change management program that will help people adapt smoothly to bringing Gen AI into the environment. I think the media has clearly publicized the potential for incorrect assertions, what I would call hallucinations, that's the technical term. Those incorrect assertions can certainly be catastrophic if they are incorporated into a proposal which is submitted to the government as an official and binding document. You're gonna need your corporate risk officer or some other function inside your enterprise to train and implement a rigorous quality control program to look for and correct the potential for incorrect assertions in your proposals. You wanna give Gen AI access to your corporate proprietary data so you can write the best possible proposals that really show the value your company brings, the differentiation that your company has. We need to be able to protect that data from compromise, both from leakage, as well as from infiltration from the outside. Your chief information officer or chief data officer is gonna to need to weigh in on establishing the standards for security of your local environment. These are just some of the risks that are most prominent today. As your Gen AI becomes accepted in your enterprise, you may find that demand for it significantly increases. We counsel people, focus on the key use cases. Don't try to solve every use case with Gen AI. Allow yourself to grow over time and make sure you select a platform that has the potential to be scalable and integrate with your enterprise. So in summary, there's enormous potential for increased revenue, especially now, while there's uneven adoption in the competitive space, there is opportunity for your company to make generative AI a competitive differentiator that lets you write more and better proposals so you can win more while at the same time achieving efficiencies in how you bid. It's gonna be difficult for chief financial officers to set benchmarks for return on investment, especially because of the long loop we face waiting for customers to make awards. The costs are incurred up front. In many cases, some costs can be amortized. Some costs will be recurring, but you may not see the actual benefits of your implementation of Gen AI for months, potentially even years, until your win rates substantially increase. And then finally, keep in mind, it's a rapidly evolving field. If you follow the news feeds, innovation in Gen AI is happening at a frenetic pace. So the potential for technical debt for the platform you've selected to become obsolete or passed by competitor platforms exists. It's a real thing. 
So you need to be able to keep your platform up to date. You're also going to adjust the potential of, for scalability. If enterprise demand starts to grow rapidly, how will you respond to that? And can your platform stand the strain of user increase? Lowfeld Consulting is not a platform developer for generative AI. We are not here to sell you a platform. We do provide training for proposal professionals on how to use generative AI efficiently and effectively. We use the Procurement Sciences awarded AI platform for that training. I do some of the training. I've got 30 years of business development experience. I say that because when we do training, we come at it from the user point of view. We also offer an AI power and user immersion program if you would like to train a number of people on a live bid in the draft RFP stage, we can give you facilitation, coaching, and assistance to bring your people rapidly up to speed while they develop the content for a live proposal. And we've trained all of our proposal consultants on how to use AI. So if you need assistance from a proposal expert on how to use Gen AI effectively, we can help you. LOFA Consulting remains a premier caption proposal services group focused exclusively on government markets. We offer proposal management, writing, graphics, desktop publishing and editing, and other forms of proposal preparation assistance and capture management and coaching. <laughs>